we do appreciate you coming here to talk about it because, of course, there's a whole campaign around detained in Dubai and I know you want to talk about <laughs> do. what actually happened because people I are do. there, it's, it's, still in hell. Yes, um, yes, absolutely. And I, and I have to emphasise that um, Radha Sterling from Detained in Dubai, I... I owe her so much. And, and what I have to say is that obviously with the way that things were progressing, um, it, there came a time where, um, because I, because she had refused to drop the case and um, she basically wanted to see me jailed, um, my family made the decision to go public. And it was basically from the time that Rada Sterling... Um, Just to say that's from the detained... From the Dubai, days, Rada uh, Sterling group, from detained, detained in Dubai group, yes. Um, from the moment that she she went to the press, um, literally in a matter of days, everything changed. Everything changed. And there was almost a, a, an international media storm about the case. And um, because then sort of I'm moving along really fast because within a matter of hours, everything changed and he ordered that my passport be returned to me in the same day. You know, spending the two years in jail, getting a fine. And that was what the sentence would have been. Yes, and a fine of the £50,000, which would just, I would not have been able to pay a full stop. And it was only, only when Radha Sterling from Detained in Dubai um, came to our help. I mean, I, I can't thank her enough. She was just, she's just been amazing, amazing. And I know that if it hadn't been for her and I, I would have had to go to the next court hearing and I, I would not be sitting here. I would not be sitting here. So something you said to me just before we, we came on air as well, is that you were unaware of how much publicity this was getting back here in the UK, back home. Uh, wh when did you sort of start to understand that, Lola? Um, my family and Radha, they were very, very sensitive to how I was feeling anyway, being in, in Dubai, don't forget, I was there all on my own. Yes. Um, so they were they were very, very kind in the way they, they protected me. So I was extremely surprised. And even now, as the days go um, by and I sort of, I try not to, you know, go back and read what was written and what's been in the press, but from the snippets that I've seen, um, it's incredible. It's it's just, um, I have Radha been. did an amazing, Radha Sterling did an amazing job because it's something that went international, you know, and... Um, I mean, we, we live in a country where we have free speech and people insult each other all the time on social media. I'm not saying that's nice. I'm not saying it's good, but no, it, it's part of absolutely. free speech. And you sort of, I remember reading your story thinking... Okay, she she said that thing. She called her husband's new wife yes. a horse. Yes. And now she's facing jail yeah. in Dubai. Yes. I, I started to read it three times. Yes. Um, I mean, I'm sure you do regret writing that anyway, uh, in some ways. But I'm not saying do you regret it because of what happened, because obviously what happened shouldn't have happened. You have the British government as well, whereby they really need to... Um, they really need to make the changes that has been suggested to them by Radha Sterling. Did you hear from anyone in the British government? We went to the British Embassy twice and they did absolutely nothing to help my situation. If anything, um, the last advice that, that, that they gave that I listened to was the one to go to the police station to make my statement where we ended up for those 12 hours and I wish to this day that I had not taken their advice to go to that police station that day. So, so far as helping and support, no. Besides handing me um, some pages of, of, of details of lawyers and a photocopy of my passport, um, that was it, really.